Massive economic aftershocks left families in every corner of this country with a crippling sense of anxiety this year. The crisis crushed bottom lines, forcing many sectors to pivot, and many still are. CTV's senior political correspondent Glenn McGregor looks at number three in our top ten news stories of the year, the financial fallout of 2020. Mass job losses and shuttered shops, the enduring images of a stunning economic shock not seen since the Great Depression. Serious consequences for Canadian families and for Canada's economy. Even before the pandemic, there were signs the economy was about to slow gradually. But as the country went into lockdown, it was clear the effects would be profound. Small businesses uh, may uh, struggle through or will struggle uh, through this uh, period of economic slowdown of uh, people uh, choosing to stay at home and protect their families. The closure of businesses large and small, thought to be temporary, began in March. Restaurants and retailers scrambled to adapt, converting to curbside pickup and takeout orders. Some Canadians were able to stay on the job digitally. 3.4 million were working from home. But by May, the unemployment rate hit 13.7 percent, the highest since the government began tracking the figure in the 1970s. As the new NAFTA agreement was ratified, trucks continued to roll on the world's busiest trade route, but all non-essential border crossings were stopped for the first time in history. The travel and tourism industries were devastated as visitors from abroad were barred entry. Fleets of jets were put in park. Airline bookings fell by more than 90 percent. Energy prices tanked, battered by evaporating demand and an oil price war between Russia and Saudi Arabia. I don't remember the last time that I saw a 75 cent a litre gas leak. The price of Western Canadian Select Oil plunged to $3.50 U.S. per barrel in April, down $31 in just three months. We are being uh, sideswiped by a major global economic downturn. The energy route pulled down Canada's stock market with it. This thing is moving really fast in a really bad direction. The TSX fell 10% in a single day, the fastest drop since Black Monday in 1987. Many Canadians saw their retirement plans blown apart. A trillion dollars of market value was washed away in a month. The Liberal government responded to the economic crisis with unprecedented spending, announcing hundreds of billions of dollars in COVID relief. Getting money into people's pockets as rapidly as possible. A $500 per week SERB benefit for those who lost work and expansion of employment insurance coverage. For businesses, wage subsidies to encourage employers to keep workers on their payrolls, rent relief and partially repayable loans, all financed by government borrowing. The Prime Minister said the country had the headroom to afford it. Canada went into this crisis with a far better fiscal position than just about any other G7 country. After the first wave of infections peaked, the economy began to snap back. Employment rates climbed through the summer. A million jobs added in June alone. We're nowhere near back to what we were before the, the virus hit. But it is of some comfort that the deepest hits did occur in March and April. With interest rate cuts, the red-hot Canadian housing market came back to boil after a brief lapse. And the stock market galloped ahead, making up nearly all the ground it had lost since its all-time high in February. Bill Morneau wasn't around to enjoy it for long. Embroiled in a controversy over a student jobs program, he resigned as finance minister and was replaced by the first woman to hold the job. It fell to Chrystia Freeland to deliver the nation's bill for all that spending. Her first fiscal update in November projected a record-crushing $381 million deficit. We will do whatever it takes to help Canadians stay healthy, safe and solvent. As the year ended, the rollout of vaccines gave cause for optimism. But the outlook for Canada's economy remained clouded by the pandemic's second act, a wave of new infections closing some businesses again and shaking consumer confidence during the crucial holiday shopping season. Glenn McGregor, CTV News, Ottawa.